want a hug like this? You want to hear a funny joke? I'll do funny things to like make him laugh. Like I'll pretend to fall, <laughs> and then I pretend I slipped on a banana. I would think about my family, and then I would get better. If he were mad, I would go away. I'll get them time, like time to um get good. Or if he wants space, just give him space. I just like to eat deep breath and blow the holes up. That means you calm down. Welcome to the Little Help Hotline, our conversation series and inspired by our real life hotline that we have here at KinderCare that is designed to help all of our teachers across the country help all of the little humans in our centers. I am Tanya and with me today is Tyrika and Carter and we are all part of the inclusion services team at KinderCare Learning Companies. Today we are actually going to be focused on <clears throat> the topic of meltdowns I'm excited for us to start here because I think that it is one that is so relevant for... It's a hot topic. It's a sure. hot topic. It's a hot topic for sure. So we actually have um, a real life call that came in from one of our centers in Dallas, Texas. Cool. So if y'all are shout ready... Shout out Texas. Shout yeah. out to Texas. Yes. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll go ahead and read through what, um, what this center had to say. All right, so it says, I'm reaching out to get some strategies for an almost three-year-old. He's been in our center for a little over a month. He's in our Discovery Preschool classroom, so that's ages two, two to three-year-olds. Um, he doesn't talk yet. He struggles with communicating his needs, whether it's for space or to tell someone to stop or to ask for something he wants. When he's visibly frustrated, he'll begin to kick his feet and scream. Uh, our teachers have had some success redirecting him to another activity, but the behavior is continuing. The teacher is very frustrated because there are multiple meltdown situations every day, which include hitting, biting, and scratching kids who are next to him. Yesterday, he wanted help with his shoes, and when the teacher asked him to wait just a moment until she finished helping get someone else's bed together, he had a pretty big meltdown. They have talked with mom, and she's explained that he has meltdowns at home as well, um, and it sounds like she's looking for some support too. We feel like we've tried everything and don't know what else to do. Can you give us some ideas to help this little guy? I know. The classic move, the kicking of the feet. Totally. Yeah. And the shoes off, yeah, the too. Shoes off. Totally. Yeah. Totally. From your experience as teachers as well, what do you think like that teacher could do for themselves? Yeah, I mean, to state the obvious, which is hard, but asking for help. Ooh. That was that was the hardest thing because you don't mm -hmm. want the other teachers thinking you can't cut mm -hmm. it, especially if you're a newer teacher mm -hmm. or if you're a veteran teacher, you're like, mm -hmm. you know, no one's gonna, you know, say mm -hmm. that, you know, Tyreka needs help. Mm -hmm. She's got it all together, um, you know. <laughs> and then of course in the moment, I mean, what do you think, Carter, for just getting, getting ready for that transition and knowing that sometimes behaviors happen? Yeah, yeah, I think that for me, when I was in the classroom, one thing that really helped me was being honest with the kids about how I was feeling too oh, and yeah. saying like, I'm feeling a little bit stressed out about all the things that are happening right now and like just sort of humanizing myself in that situation. And that also models for the kids how mm -hmm. to communicate if they have the words to mm -hmm. say how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. I found that really helpful for me, whether it was nap time transitions or just in general. If I came in one day and I was like, traffic was really awful on the way here and I'm still feeling a little bit frustrated about that, I would sit down with my kids and I would say, I'm feeling a little bit frustrated today and I really need your help mm -hmm. to get through mm -hmm. our day today together. Mm -hmm. And I found that my most successful days with my kids were the days when I was really honest about where I was yeah. and that helped them feel like, oh, we, none of us have to be perfect here. None of us have to get it right. We can totally. have our emotions. We can feel how we feel and we're just going to try to get through it together. Mm -hmm. um, I know for myself too, remembering that even though at the end of a day I can feel like exhausted and like there's nothing left to prioritize the things that make me feel good because mm -hmm. that fills yeah. your cup, right? Like whatever that may be. Um, like just good time with people mm -hmm. that I love, um, prioritizing that. Um, even though those seem like little things, they actually go a long mm -hmm. ways in, in helping to care for ourselves. So like big picture things like that. Um, okay, should we talk about the... The kiddo. Yeah. 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 What do you all think's going on for this this little guy? 
I mean, a couple of things you mentioned that stood out to me right away, they're fairly new to the center. A yeah. month can seem like a long time, but for a little kiddo who's brand new to these people in this place, these other kids, um, a month may not feel very long to them. They still yeah. may be getting adjusted to the environment. Mm -hmm. Another thing you said was they don't have a lot of language. Yeah. That would be really difficult. I think about it sometimes mm -hmm. when I have my own kiddo, like what would it feel like if I couldn't communicate right now? Mm -hmm. That would be really frustrating oh and gosh. overwhelming, you know? If yeah, I didn't imagine being super mad upset. about something yeah. and having no way to express that yeah. with your like language and then when you do express it by kicking your feet you or screaming <laughs> yeah you get you get told not to do that mm -hmm. so that those are a couple of things that stood out to me that you know he's they're new and mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of communication so yeah. those two things together might be a cause for some of the stuff that's coming up yeah um yeah. i think relationships too How's, mm. How has that child built relationships with the people that are taking care of them and yeah. maybe their peers too? Do they? Yeah. How does that, what does that, tell me more about that. Yeah. I mean, does the child feel safe going to the teacher, maybe non-verbally, just like putting your hand on, you know, mm -hmm. like asking for help somehow? Like, mm -hmm. um, does a child feel safe in that room? Does mm -hmm. a child feel like they are supported when they have these moments? Yeah. Um, how is the child feeling in terms of their support system in that environment, I think, is another factor in there. What do you think, what are some things that uh, a teacher could do to help the child feel safe? Mm. Getting on their level, mm. calling them by their name. What um, is getting on their level? Does that oh. mean like? Yeah, physically getting yeah. on their level so they don't feel like they're looking up at me while I'm talking to them or mm -hmm. there's, there's just like this weird experience that we're having physically. Um, yeah. And just trying to be there. I mean, do we know if this kid even enjoys physical touch? If they do, can mm. we put a hand on their arm or can we provide them mm -hmm. some sort of physical comfort yeah. if that's something that it, they know works for the child? Um, do you yeah. have any other thoughts? No, I mean, take it away. No, no, no. no. I thought <laughs> I those were all great. You know, I think you're hitting, you know, a good point here of like the relationships and the child feeling seeing, especially being in a new environment, mm. like, you know, having those pictures up of, you know, yeah. their family yeah. or, you know, making sure that they're represented, you know, in the classroom, because when you come into the classroom, that's another, that's your community, yeah. right? So how are you entering into this community and yeah. especially being too, yeah. I mean, you're used to being at home with your family. Totally. And so, you know, already overwhelmed by having however many more children, um, you know, unless yeah. you have a big family, which, mm -hmm. you know, this day and age, but probably not as many uh, big families as there used to be. But so, yeah, I think that's a good call out. Those are all really simple, but powerful yeah. and, ways. And we don't to... think about those when it comes to behaviors. Mm -hmm. We go straight to the behavior totally and forget true. sometimes the environment. Yeah. And that's a big piece, whether it's home environment or school environment. Those mm -hmm. all have play a factor in, you know, yeah. what's the, I guess, as we like to say, the root cause yeah. mm -hmm. of what's causing it. Cause you know, for this little guy, I'm definitely, my brain automatically goes like, what happened before? You know, like mm -hmm. what, you know, we know the nap tram transition, yeah. you know, they had to wait for the teacher, which yeah. let's be honest, a uh, two year old waiting in general, it's <laughs> not, not in their vocabulary. You know, yeah. fed a, a child, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fed a young child or, you know, took too long making dinner. Uh, you're going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think that's definitely one thing that for us to remember, you know, as teachers or as parents or, you know, caregivers that their brain isn't the same as our brain. Totally. So for us, it's like, it, it was only 30 seconds. Like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And to but them, it that's like, like 10 Three minutes. years. Yeah, yeah, three years. Yeah, <laughs> even more. Yeah, yeah, even more, even more. <laughs> totally. So. Yeah. What do you all think about the communication piece here? What are some things, with at least with the information we have, that they mm -hmm. could do to support this little one, um, given some of the limits it sounds like there are with, with his communication right now? Yeah, one thing that we love, we love our visual supports, mm -hmm. as we like to call them. So that could be either taking pictures of the kiddos doing specific things, mm -hmm. or there are some, I mean, online, there's a billion mm -hmm. things. But mm -hmm. so, for instance, for this one, for waiting, it could be like a little timer um, oh. that you use, just like a, it's sand timers or even if a kitchen timer, mm -hmm. something that gives the visual of 
like, okay, I'm not just here in, yeah, in, you know, like no man's land waiting for something to mm -hmm. happen. I have a visual there. Um, it could be like hand washing where you have mm -hmm. the steps to hand wash, mm -hmm. or it could be like in your, let's say, block center. It mm -hmm. shows the kiddos like playing with the blocks and the blocks go on the floor. We don't throw the blocks, you know, so yeah. little things like that, that for communication, but also for this kiddo specifically, it could be some, we call them like baby signs. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, not only teaching a few of like stop and please, but also maybe just having it on like a little card. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot uh, in different classrooms, we either have it like on a ring yeah. um, or different. Hook it onto your yeah, yeah, pant loop exactly. or Exactly, yeah. yeah. So again, simple ways that you could have it available in the moment. Yeah. So you're teaching yeah. that kiddo to point to what it is that they need until either the words come or if not, then you're just building on those communication strategies. Totally. Did we miss anything? You know, I think we did. What did we miss? I think we missed, like, what do we do for the big emotions? Oh. Because as a teacher, you definitely are like, okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I will work but on all of those things. what about this kid who's flailing but on my floor right yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but what do I do in this big moment? And yeah. so, I mean, I'm thinking, too, like, about that age, like simple strategies that we could recommend for just helping with some of those big emotions. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely yeah. for, you know, a little one, we might say like, smell the flower, blow out the candle, mm -hmm. you know. So smell the flower oh. and blow out the candle, yeah. that does, that's deep breathing, right? Yes. Okay, so can, does anyone want to demonstrate or are you gonna make me do the demonstration here? Harder. Metaphorical <laughs> candle here. <laughs> I wanna blow into it. Smell the flower. <sighs> And not the candle. Can't you use your fingers too? So mm -hmm. one's mm -hmm. your flower, one's yeah. your candle, oh, and you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Take a deep breath of the flower and then. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Out the candle. Yeah. It's a fun little way to get them to yeah. take the deep breaths. You yeah. Put your whole body into it. Mm -hmm. Brain science. Yeah. Brain science. Brain science for Hashtag two year olds. Brain science. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think also we mm -hmm. talked about him kicking his legs or like mm -hmm. throwing off his shoes. Can we just have them stomp their feet? Like that's a yeah. safe thing to do. Totally. As long as they're not stepping on anybody mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah so um, like redirecting it's the whole idea right that like it's totally okay to be mad yeah. not okay to hit other people right, exactly. so if you feel like you need to hit what are yeah. some safe things mm -hmm. you could hit maybe like you have some pillows in mm -hmm. your classroom yeah. they can go hit push or the wall push yeah. the wall really hard yeah. yeah so just redirecting so they know like it's okay and probably naming those emotions exactly. too right yeah. at two or three yeah. um, and of course it's not going to be automatic uh the next day they're like great where yeah. let me go stop so over here um yeah. you know but it's that repetition because just like any other skill right totally. that we're teaching them to recognize their name or mm -hmm. colors at this age you know has to be like repetition even yeah. on the days when you don't see behavior constantly going over Talking those techniques it. and those tools so mm -hmm. that it just becomes a natural part of what you're doing every totally. day in the classroom yeah that's a really good point because you don't want to be teaching these skills when they're in the middle of yes. being upset, yeah, exactly. right? Like these are things that you teach when they're in a more regulated state and then can remind them of when they're starting to get upset. Yeah. That's a, exactly. a really good point. Exactly. Yeah. Don't tell someone to calm down. Oh my gosh. They're... Unless you want them <laughs> yeah. to get 10 times more mad. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah. I read a quote that said something about like, as parents, your voice will become the voice in your children's head. Um, and that's like not backed by science or anything though. It's just like a lovely, beautiful quote. But I think there's truth to that um, to some degree that, you know, we're modeling for them the things that they may ultimately one day be saying to themselves. And so that's mm -hmm. some important work. I think right we all there. can hear our parents' voices in our heads. Yep. <laughs> but Often. that's not for today's yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Back by science, back by experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>